Good morning, Lucky Ducks. This is another beautiful day. The USDA has released a new graphical guideline for all Americans' food intake habits. But first, a new month means... You guessed it. government is once again trying to control the food that we put into our mouths, one Twinkie Wiener sandwich at a time. This new plate format is meant to take away any confusion that might have been caused by this strange pyramid format we've been having for years. I think the government realized if they start to use a slightly more familiar shape, maybe we'll start to understand what we should be eating. Gosh, dang it, I just realized. Now what am I going to do with all those triangle plates that I bought? Anyway, according to this new plate, we've got half of the plate covered with fruits and vegetables, about a quarter of it with grains and a quarter of it with proteins. Then we've got dairy off by itself, up tucked up in a little corner, because you know it's unkosher to mix your meats and your dairies, they can't touch. And then the fork, for some reason, the fork, I don't know, I just thought it would look nice, just add a fork, then people will realize, oh, it's a plate because there's a fork right next to it. I think it would have been more American to add a spork instead. These guidelines have gone a long way from where they started, believe you me. It was actually in 1917 when the first USDA food guideline appeared. It wasn't a picture or anything, it was like a pamphlet. And it divided our foods into five basic groups. The milk and meat, whoa, Whoa, totally unkosher. Cereals were two groups. You got your cornflakes, your kicks, your fruity pebbles. Third group was vegetables and fruit. Instead of fruits and vegetables, they didn't realize it sounded better the other way. Fourth group was fats and fatty foods. It was actually a food group. Fat stuff. You had to eat it. It was important. And the fifth group was sugars and sugary foods. Oh, those were the days. Now, there is one important thing to understand about these food groups, is that this was kind of during, like, wartime rationing days, when people weren't really trying to lower their calories. They were just struggling to get enough calories into their food to begin with. In 1943, they created seven food groups. Seven! Which included, one, milk and milk products, two, Meat, poultry, fish, eggs, beans, peas, and nuts. Three, bread, flours, and cereals. Four, leafy green and yellow vegetables. Five, potatoes and sweet potatoes. Potatoes had their own group. Six, citrus, tomato, cabbage, salad, and greens. Basically the green and red vegetables, I guess. Anyway, and, and citrus, that's weird. And seven, butter and margarine. Now obviously that can be a little confusing because each group has like specific food items in it and so if something comes along like like Cheez-Its say hey Cheez-Its this doesn't fit into let's see is that a is that a milk and milk products? Is that a bread, flour, and cereals? Like, where would Cheez-Its fall? So there was a lot of contradictory advice and guidelines that went along with that, and it caused a ton of confusion. They finally created four food groups. Now one thing to remember is that these guidelines were based on data that had been accumulated at the time regarding calorie intake and things like that. And also, it had a lot to do with what the U.S. was actually producing. They didn't want to. They didn't want to put something on the list and make it like really big, make it a really big important thing if it wasn't something the U.S. was producing. Because, because obviously during a time of war that wouldn't do anybody any good. In 1977, some guy finally is like, "Hey, people should reduce their fat and saturated fat and cholesterol consumption, and increase their carbohydrate consumption to 55 to 60 percent of daily calories." Don't worry, that's not going to be on the test. I don't even remember what I just said. Upon releasing these guidelines, though, the cattle, egg, and dairy industries went ballistic! You know, these industries, they go ballistic, you know, because that's how they make their money. If the government tells them they got to stop 
eating as much of these stuff, then they're going to freak out. So the government gave into the pressures of these industries and started to revise the list a little bit and nobody was really getting it. Like, whoa, we're getting all these mixed messages. I wish there was some sort of like ancient symbol that we could look at and we could really understand. And that's where Sweden comes into the picture. It was actually 1988 or something. 1980, they, uh, they stole this design from Sweden. It was a pyramid. It was a pyramid made out of food. I mean, just... They knew they had struck gold when they found this. They released the food pyramid. Ever since then, ever since then, Americans have been healthy. Nobody's been fat, nobody's been going to McDonald's. And then a few years ago, people were starting to get confused. They're like, hey, this food pyramid, it was great before, it worked for us. But now, as people start to grow up and play video games, th this pyramid doesn't really make sense anymore. They're like, wait a second, we don't have any pyramids here in America, except for that one casino in Las Vegas. Should we be eating at that casino? Like, oh, this doesn't make sense. Maybe we should go to school or something. So they revised the feudal pyramid and decided to make it a little more confusing. It was the same shape, but the portions were in like strips down the side and there's a guy running up. So they, they added like exercise to the pyramid. That's not a food. That was kind of a trick. That was a dirty trick they pulled on us. Getting a guy to run up to the top of the pyramid. So that new extra confusing pyramid didn't last very long. And a few days ago, they released the food plate. All this talk of plates and foods and pyramids and exercise is making me hungry. You know, they still haven't told me where Cheez-Its is on the food pyramid. Something they should work on for their next Revisation? Revisation? Their next rev revise? Revisation? Their next revision, sorry. Their next revision of the food table.